Greetings, tribe, and welcome to another Transformers review. It is my great privilege and honor to be bringing you this review. Very excited about this one. Ever since they first announced it, it is another Transformers crossover. Back to the Future, 35th anniversary, taking a look at Gigawatt. It is the DeLorean in the form of a Transformer. What a perfect name for Gigawatt. Love the G1 style box on him too. The pose for longtime Back to the Future fans, you know that pose. That's the Marty McFly pose from the first Back to the Future poster. And Marty and Doc from the second poster. And Marty, Doc, and Doc's lady from the third poster, third movie. Uh, side of the box, this is very interesting. Unlike typical Transformers boxes, and I actually have another one to show you here, a typical one. G1 style box. They open on the sides from the same spot. I thought this would be a good one to compare Gigawatt with since this is the other really awesome crossover Transformers uh, release, Ectotron, Ecto-1. Uh, this one opens regularly from the one side, but over on this side, uh, it's, uh, I guess, kind of simulating a trailer opening up. So it opens uh, from the top. That's interesting. Uh, definitely smaller, much smaller than Ectotron. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the two. And uh, yeah, we're looking at uh, a smaller size transformer, kind of like uh, the Autobot cars from 84 and 85, Jazz and Sideswipe and such. And this is a, a little bit bigger, kind of uh, maybe a Perceptor or Blaster sized box. They look like they're just about in scale with each other. And I, I will show you a side-by-side -side when they're all opened up uh, later on. Um, and another little closer look at the box before I open it up. There is the artwork on the front. And uh, I love the flux capacitor right on the chest. It's so cool that it's uh, there for display on the chest and not hidden away somewhere in the back kibble. Uh, it looks fantastic in the box. This is actually a really really nice display piece if you never open it some toys i want to open them up uh, some toys i open them up and then kind of in hindsight wish i i hadn't um, lucky thing about this is you can put them back in the box it looks like you can just fit them back in a clamshell unlike the original transformers that were all glued onto a backing the bubbles were glued so it's nice that you can put them back in there and uh you got the fire the flame trails, it's so cool. 35 years since Back to the Future, really cool way to commemorate it. And it's got the same style of logo that Ectotron had, this uh, crossover type of logo. So that's really cool that they're, uh, even though this is a totally different movie franchise, that there is some unity going on with Ectotron and hopefully more of these guys if we do see more of uh, these crossover Transformers. Fingers crossed still for Kit, hoping for Kit, hoping for Airwolf. A lot of great TV vehicles that would make great Transformers. And uh, tech specs, as usual, you don't even really need the decoder here. These, even especially if you're moving them around, you can really tell what those are supposed to be. This is the Canadian version, um, well, multilingual version. This one is from a shelf off of a Walmart in Canada, but uh, not so much for the bio, just so that they can fit in a lot more of the different languages. So that's Gigawatt in the box, and let's grab the old X-Acto blade and open him up now. Kind of a shame, actually. I, uh, I'm really digging this guy in the box. Would have been nice to just keep a mint in box with tape sealed on both ends, but oh well, for the purpose of the review, let's open him up. <laughs> Great Scott! Where did that come from? Holy smokes! It's it's a loose gigawatt. Wow! It's amazing. Hey, what is that? This looks like uh this looks like a havoc staff from uh world's smallest skeletor. I just lost one of these. Oh that's a bonus, awesome! Alright! Well, that's awesome. I, I don't have to open my gigawatt now. I've I've got this extra opened one. Let's uh let's take a look at uh, Transformers Gigawatt. Give you a quick 360 of Gigawatt. 
Uh, it comes with this hook that they used in the first movie in order to catch the uh, the cable with the lightning strike. I guess that helps with uh, time travel when you don't have enough uh, plutonium, enough power. And what else do we got here? Uh, we've got, oh, there's a, looks like a little Mr. Fusion. The, uh, the text on this is so tiny. I was just looking at the world's smallest Masters of the Universe figures and Here's some more really incredible, intricate detail. Look at the printing on that. It's so minuscule. And there's, uh, well, that's weird. There's some sticky tack in here. I wonder why. And just get a bigger clump of it and pull the rest out. Um, there's a little peg right in the middle of it. It looks like it should just plug right into there. It's, oh, I see. Uh, hence the sticky tack. It doesn't really hold in there securely. It doesn't look. There's a... Uh, well, that's actually better. If you pop it in like that, sideways. Um, still not all that tight. But that seems to help a little bit. Just uh, finding the right angle to go in. Still pretty loose, though. Uh, what do we got underneath? We see the face, which we'll get a closer look at when we transform it, and the gun. And the gun is very, very nicely held underneath the undercarriage. Uh, it doesn't really, ah, there goes the uh, Mr. Fusion fell on the ground again. Hey, right beside it is that Havoc staff I lost last week. Oh, that's awesome. I have two of them. Sweet. As I was saying, the gun actually doesn't look like a gun. Sometimes when the guns are stored underneath the transformer, it's, it's very, very clearly a weapon. Uh, let's see, that's popping out a little bit. But this uh, just looks like a car undercarriage, other than that, which looks like a stock. Um, I think it works really nicely. And uh, the detailing on the car, I really like this dark windshield on here. There is some stuff going on here. Um, lack of seats in there uh, kind of sucks. It's always nice when they do these really detailed transformer cars when there's seats or steering wheels. Al alternators and vinyl techs were especially cool for that, having all of the interior stuff. Um, gullwing doors, please tell me the gullwing doors actually work. Um, that's, that's one of the things that it really needs to do. If it's a DeLorean, yeah! A little bit of uh, Thunderhawk action here. Where's Mask? I guess you can sort of use this as a Thunderhawk. Yeah, like, I would be very disappointed if if this uh, Transformer didn't have operating gullwing doors, even without the seats inside. Um, you know, that's just as important a look of a DeLorean or the time machine in particular, the Back to the Future time machine, to be able to display it like that and not just like that. So really cool that they were able to incorporate that uh, into the car, into the transformation. And it doesn't seem all that difficult to pop back into place, too. The plastic is a little bit on the bendy side, so I don't feel like I'm actually going to break anything here. Feels like a good old-fashioned transformer, not made out of uh, peanut brittle. And you don't just get the Back to the Future Part 1 time machine. You get the one from Part 2 as well. The Mr. Fusion was part of that car. And then the wheels... They actually collapse into the car, too, to give you that flying look. So these, I believe, are on some kind of a, a double hinge. Or do they just flip in like that? It looks like they just flip in, flip like that, flip in like that. Ah, that's, that's what I was wondering about. So this whole part can flip in like so, or just the wheel can flip in like that. So you have the option of uh, hooking onto this little thing and I mean it's there's screen accurate and then there's whatever you prefer, whatever looks better. Uh, I'm guessing that that double hinge in there is part of the transformation. Um, 
I'm thinking this would look better just because the tires would line up that way. If you don't do that, you see how the tire just disappears. The back tire is visible and the front tire just disappears by moving this entire assembly inward. Whereas if you just push and then flip the tire itself, while well, the rest of that wheel well stays in place and the tire's a little bit visible and the wheels are uh, a little more uh, level and even. Uh, this is gonna be one of the biggest issues with this, I believe, these back panels keep popping out right here. So that might prevent Gigawatt from sitting properly, sitting flatly on all four tires. But once you do that, and you put the Mr. Fusion back on, even though this isn't screen accurate, that's how it seems to want to sit um, most securely. Um, yeah, this isn't really holding well, so I'm just going to grab some of this sticky tack, stick it in there, and uh, and stick that on there so I don't have to worry about it dropping for the rest of the review. Uh, and there is a Gigawatt in his Back to the Future 2 mode, flying DeLorean mode. Uh, so you could put that on one of those flying stands they sell for flying vehicles. That would look pretty cool, just hanging in the air and display, change it up a little bit. And there is enough clearance underneath for it to roll quite nicely. Doesn't look like anything is danger of scraping under there, except for the gun, really. That's that's the thing that's coming the closest to scraping on the ground, but even that is plenty far away. And, you know, if it bothers you, you can just take the gun out. That looks even better, actually, without the gun there. So if you don't mind just putting that off to the side, or um, I guess you could do it old-fashioned style and just store it in subspace. Then you can just have your DeLorean uh, look nice and clean from the front end without a gun being stored under there. But uh, we are going to need that gun because I'm going to transform him in a little bit. So let's bring it back. And before we do the transformation, I want to show you a couple of comparisons with some other Transformers vehicle modes. I think the comparison that makes the most sense is good old Ectotron. And Ectotron is quite a bit bigger, just like his box was bigger. The uh, good old Cadillac is quite a bit longer and higher than uh, Gigawatt and also yeah, wider from the back as well. Um, man, that's so cool that uh, you can build your movie classic movie car collection and have them be transformers as well. Both of these would look fantastic just sitting there on a shelf as what they're supposed to be. This is a great looking uh, Ecto-1, despite uh, much like Gigawatt not having visible seats and stuff on the inside. It's got enough detail to clearly be Ecto-1. Um, and this is clearly the time machine with uh, plenty of time circuit detail and whatnot that you could just have this sitting on your desk and most people who see it wouldn't say, hey, isn't that that Back to the Future Transformer? I think uh, more likely what they would say is, isn't that the time machine? And then they would be surprised to, lear to learn it's a Transformer, just like um, Transformers were back in the day when people were looking at those fantastic die-cast Transformers and then shocked to learn it actually turned into a robot. Speaking of one of those classic die-cast Transformers, Here's a size comparison with G1 Sideswipe. And for those who are curious, that's an impossible toy spike driving. Um, close, but the DeLorean is bigger. Just a little bit bigger. Definitely not lighter, thanks to the die cast. I thought they'd be closer in size, actually. But um, Gigawatt is definitely just a little bit bigger than Sideswipe. Gigawatt looks like he is more the size of the uh, 86 Transformers vehicles. So here's a hot rod 
from Transformers the movie. And those look like they line up perfectly. That's about the same size, same width, same height. All right, let's transform them into robot mode. First step is to, well, first step is to open the gullwing doors. I mean, you can you can do whatever step you want first, but uh, that to me is the coolest part of the vehicle mode, opening up the gullwing doors. Pop those up, and then these flaps are going to open up on his legs, the uh, rear underneath of the car. Once you got those flaps open, you're going to rotate the waist. Um, very similar to Prowl and uh, Blue Streak from 84. Uh, let's take Mr. Fusion out. And once you got him turned around, you're going to gently pull the legs apart and open them up. Uh, watch this panel, it's gonna wanna shut on you. So open it back up and swing it open like so. Now to access the feet, which are in here, easy way to do it is just to push these vents, these time vents, just push that down. And by pushing that down, the foot comes out just like that. So you don't have to worry about, you know, you could try to dig your thumb in there to get that out, but those vents are connected and I'll just pop it right out. Nice and easy. Once you got the feet out, you can close the front flaps of the legs and that part will plug right into that part. Nice and snug. Same thing on the other side. Plug that closed. Already playing with his articulation. Always checking for those ankle pivots. Love those ankle pivots. So nice to not have to do that anymore. We get to do that now. Now we're gonna turn these tires in and it's not going to be like that, the way I had it in the flying mode. Instead, the whole thing is going to come in like that. I guess the trick to that is have one finger in behind here and then push on the whole hubcap. That'll help you move that whole thing like that. That seems to be the trick. And then in order to just move the tire, it seems to be push right there with one finger and then push on the edge of a tire to get it to go the other way. Nice that it clicks into place to move the whole thing, push the whole hubcap. We've got those front tires in now. Gonna work on the arms now. Next, you've got these little panels to move down. You can sort of reveal how they move by pulling down on his arm, on his elbow. It'll pop that out. That just gets swung down. See there's two little grooves right there. So you can pop it up a little bit, lift it up so that it just sits in there like that. Same deal on the other side. Give it a little tug, swing it down and like that. It's nice and straight up and down. Arms just pull right out. You can pretty much figure this out by uh, by winging it, by feeling it out. Fist slides out like so many other transformers. Um, I like to make note of what I'm doing as I'm transforming to robot mode so I can remember what I need to do to get him back into vehicle mode. So those are pushed like that and hidden in the body of the car. That swings out like that. Turn the elbow, get him back like that. And the, uh, the front of the car flips down. Now, if you want, you can just have him displayed like this. Have him, uh, you know, sort of be a DeLorean transformer instead of the time machine, Back to the Future DeLorean time machine transformer. So that's an option if you want it, but uh, if you want the flux capacitor visible, then all you need to do is push, push there. Uh, lift this up and yeah, it's the head kind of gets in the way here. 
So it, it's a little bit of up, a little bit of down in order to get that to swing. Yeah, that's really cool. You can actually uh, display them in DeLorean mode like that too, if you wanted. Have the flux capacitor just visible on the hood. Not uh, movie accurate, but you know, kind of kind of a Mad Max thing or a hot rod thing, having something exposed on the uh, on the front. Uh, these wheels are popping out, so I'm just sticking them back in. And there's a connection point right here on the waist and that peg long peg is just going to plug into there and it's not it's not going to hold very well um probably because something is not lining up quite right here and the reason it's not plugging in is because these wheels actually go further in which i just realized there we go Plug those in there. Didn't look like there was going to be enough space in the body, but uh, they go all the way in, which now there's plenty of clearance for the uh, arms to plug in there. Got one on one side, holding nice and secure, and over on the other side, perfecto. Awesome. Gigawatt is looking fantastic. Now he's got a couple of holes on his uh, arms that allow you to store some of his accessories and he's also got a lot of options you can have him hold uh, I can almost hold this like a fishing rod you can have a, a fish off fishing competition with hot rod or it's got a thicker peg right here so looks like he can hold that too you can go fishing for lightning <laughs> Or there's whole, two holes on his arms, so you can have one plugged into the forearm. It could be a cool weapon, actually. A hook weapon. Uh, or you can have it up on that one, too. Same size for that. I'm just going to stick that in there. His blaster can either go in his hand or can go on his forearm. That's pretty cool. Or you can have a shoulder shoulder mounted cannon. It's not exactly as big as Megatron or Galvatron, but uh, options. That's really cool. I like the hole right here, the cannon hole. You don't usually see that. Doesn't look like you can actually plug the uh, Mister Fusion onto there, but one place you can plug it in is on the end of the blaster, just like that. That's actually. Quite secure, much more secure than plugging onto the car. You can go that way or that way, depending on what you think looks better. I think that's awesome. Being able to incorporate Mr. Fusion into Gigawatt's weapon is really cool. Everything is visible here. And here is a quick 360 old Gigawatt. Really nice paint job on him too. It's not a particularly shiny silver paint used on him. It's actually kind of got a grain to it. It's almost like a like a wood grain on that. It's unusual. Um, it's got the texture of stainless steel, which is cool because DeLoreans were stainless steel. Here's a look at the flux capacitor detail with all the different dates on them. Obviously, 1985 and... 2015 the dates from the back to the future movies there's a look at the head sculpt kind of doc brownish look right there yeah this green is awesome uh i like that he uh harkens back to those original uh g1 transformers the uh, the 84 guys like prowl jazz i like the kibley look to him uh, in terms of articulation, he's got tons of it. Arms are fantastic. They can do a full 360. Thanks to the gullwing doors, they don't really get in his way. You can move them back out of the way so that he's got plenty of posability back there or you can move them in closer to the body to look a little more armored. Um, splits, like most modern Transformers, he can do the splits. No problem there. It's 
Spartan kick, always gotta check that. This is Sparta! Yep, Spartan kick is no problem for this fella. Looks great. Almost no knee bend. Very, very little knee articulation. Just because of how big and blocky he is. And the, uh, the feet don't really go forward, do they? Don't really want to risk that, but they do pivot so you can get those cool uh, lunging poses and achieve all sorts of dynamic looking poses with this guy. And he'll be nice and sturdy too. Won't be falling over. He is really cool. I'm really impressed with this guy. Fantastic follow-up to Ectotron. So they're, uh, they're two for two with these modern uh, movie crossover transformers. It'll be very interesting to see who they do next. Uh, so that's it for Gigawatt. That's his robot mode, his uh, vehicle mode. Oh, there's a little flux capacitor design on his knees too. I totally missed that. Another awesome thing about transformers, you'll always be finding new details the more you look over this awesome toy artistry. That's what it is. It is artwork sculpted by some really, really talented artists. Um, oh, I guess there's one more thing that uh, I didn't show off. Uh, I don't think this feature is available with the worldwide release, but the Canadian version uh, does time travel. So I'm going to put him back into DeLorean mode and uh, show off how you can get this guy to travel through time. Man, that's a fun transformer to transform. On the frustrato meter, I would give that a zero if zero means not frustrating at all. It's uh, just so nice to be able to move parts and plug them in where they're supposed to go and not hear plastic straining and stretching and squealing about to break. Um, yeah, really fun. So let's, uh, let's send this guy back in time. Uh, make sure that he's got all of his accessories here. Let's see. Take the, yeah, that's, that's not going to stay on there. I need to grab the sticky tack and we'll just pop a little bit on there. Stick that on like so, so that it doesn't come loose in time travel. And stick the little lightning hook on there too, just so he's complete. And when this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're going to see some real serious stuff. Here we go. Hey, what's going on here? Didn't work. Why isn't it working? Oh, I know. Not enough power. So, uh,. I'll pull out the God of Thunder over here, good old Thor, with Mjolnir. And uh, just have him just waiting over here. A bunch of lightning. That should be enough gigawatts of lightning. And um, what should we set the time for? Um, you know, if I send it back to myself, then I can have an open one, as well as... A mint in box one. So why don't I do that? I'll just set that for uh, 24 minutes ago. And since I have two of these world's smallest Havoc staves now, I'm just going to do myself, my past self, a favor and include that with this time traveler. And here we go. <laughs> Great Scott! It worked! He's gone! He's disappeared. He's he's back in time. Well, I guess I didn't really think this through. Now I've got nothing. Um, this is usually the part where I uh, do a little medley or additional footage of the of the toy, but uh, He's, uh, he's back in time. Um, well, uh, shout out to the Patreon tribe. Thanks to everyone who is supporting the channel over on Patreon. Thanks, guys, so much. Good brothers and good sisters. 
lots of fun still being had over there. Uh, man, I really didn't think this through. I really like that thing. <laughs> it sucks. I gotta, I gotta go back to Walmart and see if there's another one there. Um, anyway, um, as I was saying, thank you to everyone supporting the channel on Patreon. If you'd like to join the Patreon tribe, you can head over to patreon.com slash michaelmercy. I also want to give a big thank you to everyone uh, supporting the channel by hitting the join button here on YouTube, becoming a channel member. Thank you very much for joining the channel. If uh, you have Gigawatt, if you still have him, if uh, he hasn't just up and vanished on you like mine did, let me know what you thought about him in the comments section below. And to join the tribe, hit subscribe. You heard me stay.